Welcome back, everybody, to the College Cod League. We are still digging through the top cut on our first day back after a pretty long spring break. Hopefully, everyone's feeling refreshed, especially for these two squads. We're going to have Akrit going up against Illinois State. Zips going up against Redbirds. we got all the things happening. And this one, pretty important for Illinois State. They're in kind of the mix at the moment, coming off of a Game 5 loss to Ohio State here proper. Kind of feels like a must-win match, and that's nothing easy to say versus a good Akron team. You took the words right out of my mouth, Alan. This is, in fact, a must-win matchup uh, for the Redbirds, considering the simple fact that uh, later on down the line, they still have to face Wisconsin, and they still have to face the yeah. Colonels. They could very much so lose either of those two matchups, and they're going to have to play through the LCQ. It's tough seeds. That's the only good thing about being in the top cut is that you're gearing to yourself at least a look at playoffs. Not everybody else can say that. The biggest thing about it is this Midwest division that we find ourselves in has largely been dominated by this Akron squad and Southern Illinois of Edwardsville. Really, everybody else is kind of finding themselves in a bit of a blender, a bit of a mixer right now. Sure, you've got University of Illinois and Champaign still doing pretty well. The Illini looking good as they typically do throughout our CCL. But there is a pretty heavy stack up in the middle. You've got Minnesota State. You've got this uh, Redbirds team you've got Ohio State now that's kind of been thrown into the party it's gonna be a really interesting battle as we finish off this second cut and well at least for Akron you're feeling pretty comfortable and confident in your ability to lock in playoffs but there is still a lot of value here proper into making sure you're coming in with a high seed that I would say is more important than any year we've had so far yeah, absolutely. I mean, you already know that they're not going to be able to take that first seed over SIUE because the one loss that Akron obviously have are, is actually against SIUE. But going into the seeding overall for playoffs and feeling the overall comfort across all maps and different modes, I think that's what you're going to be mostly looking at for the Zips at the end of this week, uh, Alan, considering the simple fact that you do have map losses both to Miami and Iowa that are probably just a stain that they don't necessarily want yeah. to be feeling comfortable for themselves considering that we all uh, in, in, I guess, the committee of the top 25 power rankings place them at number 18. Definitely want to see how strong they truly do look uh, against all the odds when playoffs do come around the corner. Well, let's take a more deeper look at both of these two teams head-to-head, -head, side by side, and other things as well. Uh, and for the Redbirds, you know, again, the three losses, you don't love it, but the thing about it is, well, it's not four losses. All of their losses have come, essentially, in this second stage at the moment, um, which I think just goes to show that there is kind of a clear-cut pathway as far as where they stand compared to teams that could be in the LCQ potentially with them out of the second cut. But the biggest kind of mark here is the control. Just six and five so far. Of course, that's a combination of both when it was kind of the TDM style of control versus now when it's more objective and tick-based. That's the one, I think, kind of blemish that you have to see improvement on immediately if you were to rise the ranks and hopefully get out of the LCQ if you're Illinois State. Yeah, I mean, look, ha having control be your worst game mode isn't the end-all be-all, but it puts a lot of pressure on the other two, right? I mean, you almost have to guarantee yourself that you're a search and destroy team, and you have to be better at hard point comparatively to another team that is just as strong in a respawn when you're taking a look at the zips. They are legitimately just that. 19-3 for hardpoint, 9-1 for control. If the control is going to be a complete wipe over for ISU, then you have to be looking at stealing hardpoint away from Akron while also guaranteeing maps 2 and 5. Difficult to do. I mean, I'll say it first and foremost. I've been really hot and cold on this Akron Zip squad pretty much all year long. There's <laughs> moments where they look unbelievable and others where it's just like, uh, guys, are, do, are our microphones working? So I I'm curious to see which Akron team we're going to get here today. I, I will say, at least to their credit, they have been progressing and getting better pretty much throughout the entirety of the year. Yeah. So as we try to break down these rosters in particular, uh, as we're getting ready for the maps as well here, I, I think you have kind of now a situation for Akron where all four players are actually really participating at a pretty darn high level. So, of course, everyone kind of looks at both Bio and Storm. They've been really doing well. John's Empire, new name at least, to the mix here for their fourth for Akron. But uh, I will say those core two that I mentioned have really been kind of the spotlighted teams and players, or players rather, for this team. Yeah, I, th I think we are getting confirmation that it is just a name change. John's Empire, I guess, so it used to be Arxes, which is a uh, the duo, as I have listed it down, with Thieves, uh, as they are a rampant duo, I would certainly say. They're averaging about 1.62 overall KD in hardpoint, 1.4 KD in the control. But Bio is going to be the player to watch out for, uh, for me personally, Alan. This is not the first time that you and I have casted over the Zips. I was very high on talking about Bio previously. No, he's got a family in the chat as well. But look, Bio is that fle flex player. Third to pick up a submachine gun, who knows, probably going to pick up the bulk if we end up going to uh, any map that would be called for it, is averaging 1.6 overall KD in both hardpoint and control. The amount of influence that Bio can do alone from that flex uh, position is really paying dividends for the Zip success.
And look, it's, let's be honest, this is a flexes playground when this comes to Vanguard yeah. overall. I mean, I think the KDs and the CDL give you that much of an exemplified case on its own. But now we take a look over at the Redbirds out of Illinois State. Last time we saw them before the break, it was Redbirds versus Red Hawks. And I think both of us going into that match when we casted it was, oh, this should be easy for Illinois State. This Miami team has been kind of all over the place. Not the case. They get 0-3 swept. And honestly, it was just kind of an inconsistent performance from all four players. Although you do look to Leo Bears, number one in Firmworks, because he's mostly been that guy to lead this squad. So hopefully they've had a nice time to kind of recuperate and get back ready to go. Yeah, I mean, Leo Bears averaging that 1.5 overall KD, 1.4 in the search and destroy is definitely the limelight for this player where the entire team for Redbirds, just to give everybody a little bit more speculation against Miami when we were casting over top of them, was that when they went to a map of Desert Seeds on Search and Destroy, that's where this team absolutely fell apart because Leo Bears picks up the sniper rather than picking up much more of a roaming, instigating SMG presence on the map. And that put a lot more pressure on the rest of the team. Not to say that Boost, Flob, and Saint can't live up to it, but you're mostly looking at the synergy for this Redbird Call of Duty team to really start coming into their own. I feel like I'm selling a broken record. This is like my third or fourth time casting over <laughs> Illinois State University that we need to finally see all four of these players get on the same page and just play the fundamental Call of Duty all off of the pressure that is being found from either of these players. Yeah, no, that's fair. Let's take a look to see what the map set is going to be because I think we all have at least some individuals to keep an eye on and maybe even more so on certain map mode combinations. The biggest thing, I think, from the team perspective, though, if you're Illinois State, you have to show improvements in the game number three. For Akron, though, double dose of Berlin. We've seen them here. They've looked good here. And now you've got a Kavudu control to get us through map number three. And then if needed... Two sets of Tuscan on the backside. Proper, where's your head? I mean, I'm definitely looking towards, uh, you know, the flex players playground. I mean, you know, when we're thinking about maps one and two, that that's where those flex players can really get uh, down and dirty, right? I mean, you can end up running a, a third sub machine gun. You can end up having that vault get really up in their face in the middle of the map for that Berlin search and for P5. You also have to keep in consideration the break potential that we have seen from Akron on that Berlin hardpoint as well. There's some machine guns that have been absolutely lights out that I think that when you're thinking, when you're looking at this from Illinois State's perspective, they have to be able to not only meet that pace but they also have to make sure ah. that they are playing that fundamental hard point at the same time that's what the zips are have been continuously doing they only have lost that one series to siue so far in split number two the only one to almost catch them with their pants down but zips <laughs> other than that they are definitely that team that's going to be putting it a little bit much more further than what redbirds have to offer i want to be able to see them come into their own here i think the biggest thing too at least you know i always say going through the second stage if you want to use the cdl as kind of the the benchmark for it the second stage of the year um through the call of duty title you always start to see the little things matter most certain advantages start to creep up when it comes to things like pacing and tempo like you had mentioned um and now all of a sudden when you've got things like the volk in the mix and a lot of teams that have kind of flexed over to running two ars uh, compared to maybe using three smgs that timing and tempo really actually becomes i think even more potent than even before titles before i should say and you know i'll say this much you know for the redbirds team you have to be able to showcase the ability to at least go step for step with this akron zip squad because if they snowball these opening three hard points they're not going to let you get back into the game so i think that's at least some things for us to take a look at it will be the redbirds spawning favorably towards p1 and a test here to see what akron wants to do as they try to break into the hole and look at two players off the rip. Redbird actually sends two players down the concourse stairs, and Akron Zips actually pay it no mind, no attention whatsoever, but they're actually still finding the kills to at least keep this contested for the time being. But as you said, favorable side of the map. Redbirds will have these closer respawns to at least try to contest sooner. And actually, I like that route as well for the Redbirds. It kind of keeps you a little bit thinner on the hill, but it allows you to destroy the break setup pretty quickly if you can find success off the flank, which we're seeing once again from Saint, but he got caught on the wall. Not able to get out. So Akron will have a chance to get in. Find a little bit of time here. Just 15 seconds to play. And the Redbirds seem to think that that's enough for us. We'll just try to send our rotation through the middle of the map to two. And this is where spawning over by the train yard is a little bit more favorable that if you are able to at least keep it contested, which the Zips are able to do, and they're at least able to go, you know, at least for those 11 seconds and only offer up about 20 towards Redbirds, you immediately look at that B Street control. And that's where the Zips automatically are. They're already winning these rotational gunfights. They'll be in for the initial time at two. Bob's got one right around the corner, does not expect it, and that will be Thieves to easily collect the kill. Two members in the hill, but there is still at least John's Empire on the outside, zoning a little bit. But do they expect that the Redbirds have already flipped the spawns and are looking to hit from the back? May not make much of a difference as an automaton and MP40 combination will do well to get in and find two kills. 
Last attempt for the Redbirds to try to break could be coming here soon. As you see, number five, Insane, is actually looking to kind of alleviate some pressure off of the rotation. And that, of course, means that the Redbirds are short-handed on the break attempt. And they'll be bounced out while the flip comes through for Akron for new. It's tough to recognize when they finally had the opportunity to try to pounce on in. And when those last few gunfights started to subside, all the Redbirds are starting to recognize, hey, now we need to be able to focus on the respawns going over towards P3. Yet another money hill. And with the Zips losing that gunfight, they spawned in for Crane. So they're going to be able to win this rotation just off of that last few gunfights that ended up coming through. But because the Redbirds are uh, almost just soaking up this last little bit of scrap time, it's going to remain even. But breaking into three is easier said than done when you're trying to do it through the B lane. Yeah, especially with this setup for Akron, it's not just the fact that you've got the street control. You've got Thieves playing really far forward into P1, who will be a good point of contact in case there is a break from Lobby. That said, though, not enough players actually watching over towards Fire, and Illinois State will collect three very clean kills. Thieves by themselves turns to find a player looking at him in Fire, and that is about as clean as you could ever ask for the Redbirds. Really good break, still 30 seconds to fight for. Yeah, being able to at least catch that first player out by the crane and then completely flipping out the map itself, recognizing that the rest of the zips are set up by that upper courtyard area. Redbirds are able to find themselves that very much need a break. The, the little bit of hesitation on two, this could not at least showcase itself here on three. A little bit of goodbye nade coming through from Storm will take off a flaw, but again, close spawns will mean that you have Leo Bear soaking at the last bit of scrap time, but I love how proactive Redbirds are trying to be across the map, maybe just a little bit too close to the sun, was Saint putting on their best Icarus impression, trying to get in the backside of the trains to try to block the spawns. They will lose that gunfight, which means that Akron again will be in for the initial time. Another aggressive setup here where the line of scrimmage is far in front of the hard point for Akron. I love it. It's really nice. The thing about it is to make sure that as you get kills, you continue to look behind you to make sure that you haven't gone a step too far. And uh, you've seen that. Thieves has kind of done that. Gotten a kill, turned around, moved back. All right, cool. We got spawns. Turn back your attention to the front. That is a flawless opening 30 seconds. Setup-wise, execution-wise, all of it absolute perfection. But the Redbirds do find some space to work with backside of the train yard. Kind of trying to spread this defense out as much as possible. And it actually means that Akron has to step off the hard point for a touch. So, decent idea here for the Redbirds. But the problem is they're still unsuccessful largely on getting the break. 15 seconds to fight for in bio. He's got an idea on pretty much where all of these flightless birds have sat to. And that'll be enough to likely finesse a lot of this scrap time and let his teammates go on rotation. I was wondering when Saint was going to become active over there because, I mean, you just had Bio just going absolutely AWOL over by the train yard and was just collecting kills left, right, and center. This time around, Redbirds could not break in for the scrap time, which means we will see yet another flip coming through. But getting in towards the middle of the map, 4P5, nice. this is where you need to win convincing gunfights. Redbirds do a great job off the initial time to be able to hold the space and read where the rest of the spawns are coming from. Oh, and they're reading these spawns, Andy, I'll tell you that much. Three members all trying to make their way through the gates of the warehouse. Saint expected the play to come through the inside interior of the apartments, but it's Storm who actually spawns out to find a bit of crossing fire. That's going to do well to at least get Illinois State off the point for now. But again, the collection and correction of this setup is pretty damn good for the Redbirds. Looking really yeah. solid on this P5 at the moment. It looked really bad for them on the fourth, but they're still maintaining about a 20-point lead, and you've got two players already flipping spawns around for new. Beautiful string and a half worth of hills here for Illinois State. And you're okay to give up these back 10 seconds. See, there's no reason to contest this again. To your point, Alan, they are already getting in those close spawns on the backside of fire. Upper courtyard position is going to be held so far for Redbirds going in towards the second set. You knew it was going to be close. Even holding this 10-point lead ahead of it all is going to be massive. But Saint, able to work their way on the backside of the staircase, going to catch Zips trying to push through that upper courtyard. And because the gunfights went in the way of the Zips, spawns have now flipped. So Zips will have the closer respawns to try to recontest this hill. The spawn started to flip like immediately as the hard point opened. I, I was a bit surprised. It boost was playing pretty far forward in this location, but I wouldn't have thought that that was going to be far enough to force the spawn flip to happen. But we learned something new about Vanguard every day. And with that little bit of blessing, Akron's able to come through cleanly with Storm's double and really put a foothold onto this hard point with still 25 seconds to fight for. Wanting it, pistol in hand, Storm's able to turn that into three in a row. And doesn't seem to be dissuaded by the fact he's only got 20 HP. Wanted to challenge more. Stuns come through. Redbirds to follow, but it doesn't make a difference. Storm able to help with Bio, and that's going to be five in a row for Storm. Looking for streaks as Akron take their first big lead since the opening rotation. Yeah, this is a big 50 seconds coming through from P1. Bio is piecing on five in a row. Two more kills. He'll get that streak for the Glide Bomb flop. His task to try to deal with them in a 1v2. One versus that Light Post, and the other one versus Bio. will end up at least collecting that kill, so no Glide Bomb will be coming around. But where Redbirds have failed comparatively to Zips within that first set is when they were spawning over by the train yard side nobody was able to get that B lane control nobody was able to shut down the middle of the map and Zips were able to collect off of it and were able to get in for the initial time yet again 
Oh, Leo's got to go quickly here, though. He's got players behind him. Really good read from Leo. Jumps out of the hard point, takes down a double, and his teammates behind have kind of alleviated any potential pressure from the side doors. One player missing, though. Storm is still on the outside of this hill, waiting for help before they go for the break. And as the zips stack, here comes the hit. 20 seconds to fight for it, but it's Leo just outside the hard point. Comes in to find the final kill, and with that, very well may lock down the full hard point time here at the Scrap 15. The storm is over by the crane, though, so you know that Boost wants to be able to find them, and they absolutely will. While all that battle, that scuffle that was happening over by P2, you ended up having one lone Saint player just making sure that no lingering Zips members were able to get on the backside of fire, at least holding on to the spawns for P3, trying to make this a money hole for themselves. There was a lot of pressure on Leo Bears, but they absolutely come through in a clutch. Uh, that is a very poor hold from Illinois State. Three straight kills. Boost having to do it all himself. And wait a second. Boost just does it all himself, apparently. Thebes, I don't know why you're not trying to follow up to get this elimination, because now you've got Redbirds that are here. Pretty good idea on where Boost has been positioned, but here comes the help from the outside through P1. Bio and Storm doing well to contest. Last player around would be Saint, and Bio will make sure that there is no further contest. 30 seconds to fight for Illinois State looking for their final break attempt, and it's all going to be through this courtyard at P1 with Boost trying to clear out fire, and the kills are decent. We'll have a 2v2 onto the hard point, but the problem is Bio is expecting it, and with that, there will be numbers here for Aquin to lock in the back 10 seconds or so. I was on another five spree again, just threatening the idea that they can get that glide. Now on a six, they're going to soak up the back of the scrap time, but he's one bait and switch away from getting that glide bomb. That glide bomb will be the final nail in the coffin to close out this map number one between these two teams. In for the initial time, though, our Redbirds is trying to at least hold these close spawns, but the issue is that Fees has already worked their way in the backs of the warehouse, and that's going to force all of Redbirds to spawn in mail. Half to try to use these kind of sporadic positions to your advantage, but it's not going to happen. Bio thinking that this is the time for the glide oh, bomb. Oh, no. And he'd be right. Finds a kill in the back line. Akron still stacked up from the front. Looking to get on the hill, but how about the ARs lining things up from Illinois State? Required gunfight wins coming through, and they do it cleanly. Even the MP40 at range for Saint. Nearly got the job done, but Flob stole it right underneath him. And now Saint thinks, all right, maybe time for a pinch, but doesn't expect the player mid-map. Leo looking to pick up where he had left off. Good for the first. Second player crosses. Shots are decent, but not good enough for the kill. And then information on the final being Storm. As he looks to try to contest single-handedly, that's not going to pan out. 202-160. Illinois State, good in the scrap time here at four. Good on the scrap time, but the initial setup going in towards five is not as strong as it was during the first set, Alan. You have Bio just zoning things away. A glide bomb did not exactly find everything that they were wanted, but at least kept the Redbirds off of the hard point for a small amount of time. They'll still be able to maintain this 40 or so point lead going in towards five. It's just about collecting these gunfights, holding on to these power positions, but Redbirds are continuing to stay scrappy, just trying to at least flush uh. out where these Zips players are located at. Yeah, talk about flushing players out. Bio is using every crevice available to possibly do more than you could ever expect. Four in a row, 30 and 15. Knows he's got boost close, but hindered. It's Phoebes who finishes the kill. An impressive moment, though, for Bio. Takeover moment at a key time as we go to 206 to 181. Not just a contest over the fifth hill, but both teams vying for position on the left side of the map. And with those doubles from FLOB, that will be Illinois State spawning on the left side and an opportunity to potentially not just lock down Scrap, but win this rotation to do, unless Thieves have something to say about it. These are big kills does. coming up from Thieves. Hitting up the next one on five in a row. That's going to be the immediate break going in towards one. This is where Zips were able to get 50 points off of the second set of rotation, Alan. They can absolutely close it out here. That's two rotations. The first hill here, and the third from a couple of moments ago where the Redbirds just are not able to put together a solid setup. Oh boy, if Johns finds that elimination, I don't even know what. <laughs> Leo might have to reconsider his life for a moment. But now, on a flank from behind, Leo turning some brilliant moments around as he gets a little bit of a mini pinch over towards the side door. Reads one in the back offices, but needs help desperately. And help just is kind of on the outside looking in. The SMG's finally working themselves forward. Boost also in the mix. 1v1 with Storm, who takes down a double! Brilliant hold from Akron. Still an opportunity to win the game here, and Storm is causing an absolute... I, I don't even know what! A hurricane, if you want to call it that. He's absolutely taken over. Taking over indeed, just meeting everybody at the gate. Saint has to rush in, has to contest as soon as possible. A big two-piece does come through, so that's at least going to guarantee the rotation. Redbirds do have two players close to threaten it. We are on the back, gets a read onto one. Big 1v1 win versus Thieves. He's got help as well. Have to play patient here if you're acting, and they're not. They're just going to keep going on in, flooding forward. John's looking for the double, denied. Hold on a second. Redbirds looking to get themselves over to 200 point mark. 
Akron looking to stack. A lot of this coming from the train yard side. Flop, stun out. That's going to be good. Do you chase down this kill? Sure does. Finds it cleanly. Saint watching over his backside is able to also tally up one other. And that's a three-for-one exchange. Good news here for the Redbirds. 30 seconds still to fight for, but you have to be perfect. Leo needs help. It's him and Flob looking to defend against this last seven seconds for Akron, but nobody wants to step into the hill. Finally, as Leo says, I guess I'll go. It's Akron who is baiting it the entire time. A little sleight of hand as it'll be the Zips who take over the first map. But a lot closer than it was at one point, 250 to 211. Yeah, it absolutely was a lot closer there at the end than it was at one point. I mean, you remember going in towards the second set, what, it was like a, maybe like a seven-point lead in favor of the Redbirds of all things, and then the Zips just turn it up a notch, and then they walk away with about 50 seconds off of P1. Just heroics left, right, and center from Bio specifically find themselves on back-to-back -back sprees. Their high streak, of course, being at eight, but being able to get that glide bomb was not the biggest thing that Fla oh. uh, that uh, that Bio was able to do throughout the entirety of that map. Most importantly, was just the multi-kill facet that he was bringing to every single hard point. It truly felt like finessing their life for such a long time. That one little hold that they did in that staircase over by Mail, just denying Redbirds that sufficient time that they got off on the first set going in towards the second, was the dagger in the side for Redbirds. They knew that it was just one kill away all they had to do was deal with bio in that top mail room uh staircase and they were probably going to walk away with maybe about like 35 maybe 40 seconds or so because they had the numbers but because bio finessed their life for such a long time and everybody yeah. from redbirds were just trying to fuddle in to be able to deal with him they just got collapsed on him from there on out throughout the scrap and all of the warfare zip just came out on top yeah it's one of those easier said than done moments it kind of feels like they're in that last kind of contest and you really can't blame the Redbirds at the end. You've got Leo and Flob who are kind of sitting here like, Wait, where, where is everybody? I, I thought we were going to get contested here. We stepped off the hard point for a reason. But Akron, that was all part of the plan. Let them step on, get the information, who's watching what. And then flood through and overwhelm the last two remaining members. And it works out very successfully for him. So 36 and 22 is the final tally for Bio. 31 and 22 for Storm with a pretty raging moment at the end. And really, from start to finish, pretty even statistics, not just on the damage category, but also in the hill. Good stuff for Akron. A narrow lead at the end, but I will say, I think there were two very cataclysmic moments for the Redbirds. The P3 fire, second rotation, missed yep. the setup completely. And then once again, that setup in the third rotation for one. I think those are the two where you're looking at that saying, surely if we were to even hold for 15, 20 seconds, we could have won this map. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, Alan? Because when you're thinking about it for Redbirds, specifically on that P3 hardpoint, just to hit it one more time, is that when they got the immediate call that there were two players, at least a multitude of players coming through from the front of fire, everybody gave up their position and started running towards it. By that point, Zips just were able to collect those two players that were yeah. over by the crane, over by the docks, just had to find those two kills, and spawns flipped out, lickety split. Just minor bit of uh, execution deficits that I feel like the Redbirds are just... Very far, or very short away from getting themselves into a position that they need to find themselves to be a playoff caliber team. But not done with this series quite yet as we just stay on the same venue, but ahead of the search and destroy. And this turns now, what, into a must-win situation for Illinois State? You have to feel like yeah. just based off their control record, right? And look, I, here's the thing. Like, watching this Akron team over the course of this year, their search, I would say, has probably been one of the more consistent parts of their game. Um, I think like when they miss, they're missing on rounds that they just kind of don't have a very complete idea of what they want to do. But when they're actually putting together an idea as far as what our playbook is going to be and then try to execute on it, I think they're actually pretty successful with it. So uh, I think that this is going to be one of those maps again where I hate to keep kind of going back to the same thing. It sounds very kind of out of the can, but uh, if you're Illinois State, you have to set the energy of what this map's going to feel like. Are you going to be able to kind of outpace them by just playing fast? Or are you going to just outbrain them by kind of picking them apart slowly? I think you need to set the, what the uh, kind of identity of this map is going to look like. Because in my mind, I do think you have to win this map here if you're if you're the Redbirds. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because are they going to be the aggressors? I feel like it's going to be the immediate question because we even saw there at the final end of P2 in that final set of hard points. Like, they want to be the aggressive team. They want to try to flush out these Zips members, but... Zips are just playing nice and coy, just waiting for it to be able to collect off of those unforced errors. It's really what it feels like that Akron have been doing all season long throughout their search and destroys. And it kind of brings me back to what it was almost like for Redbirds versus the Redhawks in that search and destroy on the Bokaj. They just got a little bit too antsy, but here comes that immediate A push, leaving one player behind. They'll collect off that first blood and it should be that that bomb will go down. On Leo, that's good information. Storm trying to help out his lost teammate and feeds inside A. 
turns into, all right, well, we've got a three-on-one here. I'll go forward. Boost great information on John's Empire in the back. A couple of the shots will turn John's around for a moment. He actually did not see Leo over the top side of the railing, and that is a clean pickup. Bio, who is sniping the whole way, would have to do something of Reddit caliber worthiness if he were to find a way to clutch this one up. And as he slowly reloads, it looks like this will probably be a conceded round in one form or another. Leo Bear was throwing shoulders, wants to challenge him, and well, Leo's going to get the immediate information he'll collect. Yeah, they, it was just a great call immediately. Colin and Jesse actually talked about this when they were casting over their first matchup on the day, Alan, and I'm sure that you feel the same way, especially with how uh, Berlin has ever so slightly changed. That this aggressive hits over towards A is going to be the immediate call out for a round one strategy. I feel like it's going to be what we're probably going to get uh, very used to because we know that it's it's almost like a checkmate type of strategy that when you get that bomb planted over at B, it's almost very impossible to be able to, de uh, to deny it. But if you can be that pace setter, like what we were talking about for Redbird, specifically for Leo Bears that finds three in that round, to aggressively get those players inside of the office in the upper courtyard, well, it should be a guaranteed round just off aggressive gunplay alone. Well, they can at least uh, allow you to cash that check at the bank with the opening first round. Akron looking to do the same. Flob, though, on the flank. Good trigger discipline. Able to lock down the first once more through the side door, but I don't know if he was just trying to shoot at one player and the aim assist was pulling him to another, but there are a multitude of zips to take a look at. Boost able to find one more on the exit from the initial plant, and no one has scouted out Leo Bears on the flank yeah. yet. He's very, very slowly starting to make a move, and I believe he may have just seen Bio cross ahead of him, but as he continues to sneak... Now it's down to finding the last player. Wouldn't you know it's Phoebe's in the exact same spot that he was last time. Leo happy to take the kill while Boost finding the other. That'll be two rounds for the Redbirds early here at the A site. And it's going to be talked about. Leo Bears now on four in a row through these opening two rounds, Alan. Look, three kills away from getting themselves that glide bomb. You can't get that kill through the roofing of the B-Hut anymore, but you can still get a lot of information in later rounds. And well, not to say that it can't find kills anywhere else on the map uh, for certainty, but that was just a wonderful play coming through. Uh, again, say what you will about being able to find the first for Flaw, but you know, shooting in between two players rather than shooting at one player's head. It was all the information that you needed. You saw a lot of information just off of that opening scuffle. And from there on out, Leo Bear is just playing coy, just knowing that the setup for the zips in a post plant had to be inside the office. They complete the pinch. As Leo Bears is being that bomb carrier. It's going to be the same setup, leaving boost behind, setting three players aggressively up to A. Uh, it's crossfire defense here for the Akron Zips. No one actually watching the push from behind. It's got to be just an instant reaction type thing. And as Thieves takes down the first, good information here on Moore. As quickly to follow was John's Empire through the middle of fire. So good adjustments here from Akron. Turns into not just kills, but one of those was most crucially on the bomb carrier who's dropped that just outside the fire lobby doors. Stan has to go big. A little check of the hidey hole. Won't see any information. One player up in the upper courtyard, and John's is more than aware of this. Waiting for one another. Wait, John actually steps too far forward, maybe. Gets out the window, but a kill over the middle of the map from Boost will allow him a look at him. Finds the kill, and now it's down to a 1v1. Bomb still down, 33 seconds to play. Boost on the outside, looking to once again get some control from the high ground. The main objective is to get the objective first, it seems like, but Boost <laughs> is still trying to clear his angles. That stun is not really well placed. And how about this? He's got an opportunity, maybe not anymore. I was going to say, if you just quickly go through fire, you could maybe get a plan off at B, but Thieves playing forward into the train platform will likely sit here and say, I'm going to allow you to plant, and then I'll play after the retake, and that will occur at the last second. Bob will be planted. Thieves looking to likely, I imagine, challenge quickly, but it's not going to be gifted the opportunity. Boost is out of there. Oh, and it's played in for him, too. Look, he's putting himself in the backyard of a courtyard. Thieves has to play so fast, has to check all these corners, but Boost has completely just escaped Thieves. Has no idea where he's at, so he's just going to hop it. I love the call. Boost has got to check it. We've seen so much of this this past weekend. Now you got to check the bomb, and of course it's planted <laughs> for that exact position. Nice yeah. timing and awareness coming through there at the end to win the 1v1. It got dicey with that timing, and quite frankly, it got rather sketchy through that opening breakoff because you said it wonderfully. It was a nice little turnaround coming through from the zips defensively. Recognize, hey, there's no stuns. There's no nades coming over by the docks. We need to send John's Empire all the way through the upper courtyard to, uh, to restructure our defensive setup over by A where the crossfires were able to at least find those opening kills. But if John's is not there, very much so could have been an early numbers advantage for Redbirds, but still a three-round lead nevertheless. Oh, Akron. Once again, over towards A. 
Flob is playing forward into pillars this time while Saint is the one over the top of the bomb. Gets one. Not bad. One for one spot. Quick flank from Flob. Runs into two oh. in the staircase. That will work nicely. Thank you very much. And the funny thing about that is both Zips players were looking that direction, expecting the flank. Just neither of them could connect with the shots. And it leaves Johns with a 1v3. Good luck. Have fun moment. I mean, you have to assume that all of Zips are probably saying, look, if there's one person you don't want to get this kill, it's Boost. Off of the potential ace of the last round, they're on five in a row. John's going to give a good old Scholar's try at this. We'll collect that bomb. And they're actually going to run straight into a player in the upper courtyard and is going to wow. get slammed through the staircase. Just Redbirds, you know, we talked about, are they going to be the pace setters? Are they going to try to play more methodical, just try to wait for the information to come to them? You're getting our answers four rounds deep, brother. I, I think it's one of those situations here, if you're Akron, you're going to have to get aggressive with some stun and nade checks here at Train Plat. You cannot just let Illinois State walk on into A for free this time. The setup that we're seeing for Storm and Thieves is just not really fully working out. Even though the crossfire from the previous defense allowed them a chance to kind of at least evenly trade, you have to dissuade the Redbirds from getting into A. And the other thing about it is if you do not get hit markers, which you would not this round, you would then know that there is no there is no hit coming over towards the A site. Thieves down low, dealt with, flobbed, stunned over the top. Don't think it connected, but it doesn't make much of a difference. And now a 3v4. Bomb was always designed, though, to play through mail. Just comes down to what do you see from this position, and can you get the B? Leo seems to think so. A little ill-advised, as the player inside the site in John's Empire had no problem dealing with them. But Saint opens up the back side of this B site, completely isolating John inside B at the moment. While being aggressive through the middle of the map, Saint will take refuge back inside of Mail. Again, the problem still resides is that the bomb is being overwatched by John's Empire inside that B hut. So looks like Redbirds are looking to flip the map. Well, Flob is going to try their best. Now Saint going to give their best go of trying to deal with John's. And John's just hops down to the box. This time around, Boost was there for the help. Uh, and Storm's going to get caught from behind here, likely. Looks like Flob's got an idea where he's at. Yep, sure looks that way. And how about the flawless search and destroy from the Redbirds? My goodness. First look we've seen from either team over towards B. A bit hairy, a bit dicey, but it works out nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, Leo Bear's getting wildly and aggressive. Look, I feel like eight out of ten times they probably win that chow, knowing exactly the corner that the one lone Zips player will be located at, but not having immediate help. I'd love to be able to see that mid-round adjustment this time around when you had Saint working their way in to be able to get that bomb and go for the plant. Boost was there to overwatch them, now finds themselves on six in a row. You would have to feel if they get the glide bomb here would be an immediate call in to try to close it out here. Aggressive defense into mail. Leo and Saint that are in position to potentially try to rotate through this, but they lose their overwatching AR and boost from top fire window. So the doors get blown wide off the hinges. The bomb wants to be planted, but Leo sees all of this. Tap, 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 tap. Why not? All into it. The head stops the plant, at least initially. But Storm has picked it up, and he's going to get this off. Saint didn't actually expect someone else to be there, and Storm, he's able to find the first elimination, a key one, turning this into a 2v2. Flob looking to defuse, though. Bio able to get a couple of the shots. We'll push him off for now. John's Empire also moving quickly. As Leo looks to clear warehouse, but they don't expect each other. It may not matter. Leo and Flob finish off the final two kills. And it's the Redbirds who go 6-0 in the search to tie our series at one. Was it an ice rink back there? What is, how did Leo do that? So fast. That was crazy. I it's just, fast. I'm, People look not fast. <laughs> not fast. <laughs> it's just insanity incarnate, really. Because, I mean, like, Leo Bears, the moment that this was all being set up for an offensive push to go over towards that B site, like you were saying, you already had two players inside of mail. But even more so than that, you had Leo Bears who didn't get any pushback at all through that concourse train yard area. He's already in the back side of the warehouse, brother. Like, it felt like we were in that round yeah. for like 15 seconds, and Leo Bears is already in the back of the defensive setup for a post plan setup. Stops the initial bomb plan from coming through, gets the information. Look, there's one inside the boathouse and puts them on absolute skates to be able to get that final kill. If that last player stays alive inside the boathouse, maybe the post plan has an opportunity to be able to extend the game, at least to put zips on the board. But Redbirds just. Too aggressive and too clean at that. We had back-to-back -back yeah. six sprees coming through from two different players. Allen Redbirds take the search and destroy, as I was probably expecting them to do so, even up the series one apiece. It's good stuff here for the Redbirds. My goodness. Take a look back over the stats. I mean, you mentioned it. You, you see the highest streaks right there. Six, six, and four. 
Saint tried to do all the dirty work, really, as he was the one rotating. Still found 600 damage. And even though the First Blood's tally is not necessarily 100% accurate to how we normally think of First Bloods, there really wasn't an advantage in that category, as you would expect in a 6-0. At least based on the three players that stayed in the game from the Zips, like the the opening engagements were pretty even. A lot of where I thought the breakdown had happened and why Redbirds uh, COD had a big advantage in this, each individual round was largely due to the fact that they were just manipulating the two v twos, three v twos much better than Akron were. They were playing off of the uh, confirmed information, right? What was left over off of that last player's known position. I mean, you go back to just one round where Leo Bears just makes the long crab walking flank all the way to the backside of the train station, understanding that in a post plant situation, there was nobody that ended up leaving the concourse. Why was that? Because Boost was covering the side door and from that position of P5 was also going to be able to at least confirm that there was a player leaving going over by the rail yards. Because mm. of that, Leo was able to then slowly work their way all the way through the backside of the concourse stairs. Good friend, there's no Nobody playing a ratty angle outside of this area. Why would you with the bonds pointed over there? You could be playing some insane timing. And Leo Bears is absolutely collect. You're absolutely right to talk about those first bloods may not paying the utmost dividends, but it was the collection and confirmation off of information gained from those trades that all of Redbirds were absolutely able to collect on. Great stuff for the Redbirds, but the big question that we need an answer to comes up after the break. Can Illinois State find a way to improve in the control? Historically, it's been their worst mode all year long. So maybe an opportunity for the Zips, but we'll have to wait and see when we come back after the break. we got a good one on our hands here. 6-0 search and destroy from Illinois State. Redbirds flying high after that. i got to stop at the bird puns. They're way too easy. Akron Zips, though, the number 18 seed, at least in the 8th seed, the number 18 ranked team here in the CCL. Look pretty solid through the hard point. But now we get to a really important map number three. Mostly from the lens of Illinois State. Due to the fact that their control has been eh, just better than 500 so far this year. Which is not very good considering where they find themselves in the top cut. 6-5 and five overall. Comparatively to the 9-1 and one Akron Zips. In this map of Gavutu control, even regardless of where we were playing live dependent on round five defense, now we're moving over towards tick progression, is going to the play to the strengths of the Zips. And Redbird, they need to be ready for this. Considering the simple fact that when you're thinking about some of the lights out performers that are represented on the Zips, it's actually their ARs, funny enough. Their triple AR is absolutely phenomenal. Between Storm and Bio, I, I don't know which one is going to be more deadly with the AR, but if you're thinking about picking up that third AR, it's going to be something that Redbirds need to be very ready for, considering the simple fact that they are much more built around submachine gun presence. Now, we have seen some Volks being brought out by them on that Berlin Hardpoint nice. and the Berlin Search and Destroy. Is that going to play into an effect for any amount of success coming into the control? Yeah, no, that, that's those are all great questions. I don't have answers for you right now, Andy, but we'll find out here soon. And it really does have to start with this opening defense. Same idea that we talked about for the Search and Destroy. If you're the Redbirds, if you can really establish good map control here on the D, Maybe there's an opportunity for you to really kind of take over early, but not the case so far. Johns with the SMG, first two kills come through, looking to threaten the B zone. But as they start to make their move forward, it's Flob on the back line that actually forces them to back up just a touch. Continuing to hit this pinch for the Redbirds, which is pretty solid news, but they've missed Bio, who is able to stop the clock by sitting in the B zone for now. They got to deal with them as well. While that's all happening, it's a tried testament to how control is truly played out. You got one player just trying to at least split up the defense, getting themselves over towards B. We'll get that first tick denied, but the presence going over towards A actually gets met by Boost, who finds themselves two kills of their own, at least shrugging Zips off of the control time for now. Have to get back over towards this A zone. Hotly being contested at the moment as there are a number of Redbirds who are mostly on the low ground. Nice elimination there for Boost. Have to make sure there is no forward pressure from the Zips. And at the exact same moment, Leo, who was kind of lingering top AA gun, has now found a way to get through. So you want to talk about defensive pressure. It has absolutely been established. And where is Akron? Where's Storm? He's 0-4. Nothing to find for him whatsoever. Bio finally gets on to at least stop the clock, but there are desperate plays happening all over the map, including John, who's making a play over towards B. This is just a cross your fingers, toes, and hope and pray that you can find some semblance of success, because at the moment, it's been all Redbirds on this defensive control of the map. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like communication is anywhere, if at all, happening for the Zips right now. It's just one player off of spawn. Okay, you go try to contest over here. I get off of spawn. Now we're gonna just trying to at least get our arch rock back in our favor. Finally, some resemblance of map control 
finally coming through for the Zips. They know that Leo Bears is still over by their concrete stairs. They will deal with them in kind. That means that the A zone will be completely conceded for the time being. Smart by Redbirds not to give up too many lives. Especially knowing that they need those, because if one good break does come through from the Zips, they get back cage. Well, that could mean those three ticks of progress over by B can completely go by the wayside. Mm, okay, here's an opportunity. Just when you thought the round mage has been dead and over, Akron all of a sudden have Storm in a really good position. 1v1 right outside green. Saint good for it. Did they read that John has gotten around the back though? Oh, number four in blue. Opportunity to get through. Maybe even blow up this defensive setup around B, which still doesn't even have high ground control. But oh. John, oh, he doesn't fully clear out the back. And with that, Illinois State gains some luxuries on the defense. Yeah, I mean, you just have Boost playing all the way on the northeast side of the map as far as they could possibly go without getting their entire operator just soaking wet in the waters of the Solomon Isles. And now down to 28 seconds, 10v7. You know that Akron zips want at least one takeover by B, but it doesn't seem like Redbirds are willing to give it to them. Yeah. Maybe an opportunity to sneak on with nobody on the B site here, but the life pressure is significant at the moment, let alone the fact that your limited amounts of resources coming off spawn are going to be delayed here, at least a touch. First ticket progress is looking okay, though, at the moment, and the Redbirds are still clearing out green. Hold on. You've got two players that are stacked in the B zone. Illinois State, who's making a play to retake the B zone? Second ticket progress is done. Leo finally comes forward to deal with one member on the zone, but John is still in the area. He turns that into one. 12 seconds on the clock, 3v3. John for a second. Can anyone get here to touch in time? Storm has to go. Ride the lightning. You got to get on. Three seconds. No one watching the initial cross. It's a 1v1 for the point, and Boost wins it. But goodness, Illinois State, you're making me nervous. Making me nervous, making you nervous. I mean... I'm making the entire college and campus nervous for whatever reason, even if they're not Call of Duty fans. That was whew, egregious as far as, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the second that they recognize, look, we're under 30 seconds, you had two, if not three players just fly through ring for some reason. And by the time that all the zips get over towards that East Beach front, all the Redbirds are spawning back cage. Not going to be able to get there very quickly, and the stack almost got them the entirety of the zone, so... Redbirds need to answer with five ticks of their own. That is the current bar set by the Zips on the previous offense. Nice opening break for them. Two for one, it will go. The top LST, ship control to boot. Great opening offense here from Illinois State. Really, at this moment, the only player that could provide a problem would be Bio, but Boost reads it nicely. This very well may just be the A zone right here. It's a full-on stack. Second tick already done. But Akron finding kills may have an opportunity to touch this. But you have to commit to getting on in the first place. Fees is still trying to work the top side of the boat, and with the stack below him, he's going to have to either try to slide on or just give it up and decides kind of decide to do neither of those. So that's going to be good eliminations for the Redbirds as they extend the clock an extra 60 seconds, and they also carry a six-life lead. Look at the position as well on the map by Leo Bears. Would have been able to influence something going on in the back. The issue with that position is that there was no back green control for Redbirds, so that play was much more of a mute point where Leo Bears is getting wildly and aggressive. Saint finds themselves on six, though. One kill away will get themselves the glide bomb, and you'd have to assume that they would probably use that to try to get themselves in an offensive mm. round. Saint knows that there's one player in here. Can they find it? Yes, he can. Glide bomb has been accrued. This is a tool that you could choose to use right here. It would give you a huge advantage for the map overall. But with this life count, you may still opt to use this last 90 seconds just to try to chip away at the lives. And that seems to be the call, at least initially. But as the first two kind of forward members of the Redbirds move forward... Well, they get cut down and stalled just a touch. Still good high ground control, though, for Illinois State. Looking to set the thing up through the middle of the map. And Akron's providing a lot of vacancy here through mid. And you, they're, they're so far behind the B zone. This is by far one of the most passive defensive setups that I think I've ever seen for a B hold. And they're getting picked apart. Straight kills coming through for Illinois State. And they've got two members on as they're going to get the first tick, no problem. Unable to fully read, though, the spawns. Again, you get yourself on the B zone as an offensive team. There's only really one place that all of the tips are going to spawn, and that is on the backside of green. They were able to get those two ticks of progress, I do believe, were the Redbirds. So that is great progress. You were able to meet the five tick effort that came through from the Zips on their opening offense. 16 v 10, though. We're just about under a minute left to play. This is still very doable. It very much so is. But the question starts to loom on, do we commit the glide bomb? It is a tool that could kind of bail you out but with two ticks of progress on the zone and still enough time to set something up. You may not need it yet. 
John in the middle, just he he is the correct focus right now, by the way, because if he wins a 1v1 with Saint, this entire play gets completely blown up. Oh boy, he has found it, no problem. So now the Redbirds that are deeper need to try to find a way to work around the back. And so far, so good. Thieves extending their life nicely in the pre-fire. A beautiful level for Thieves. 5v12, the current count. 17 seconds on the clock. Storm in a 1v1 with boost. No problems there. And that may just be it. The Redbirds may not be able to touch her. There are still so many defenders that are nearby. And as John tallies up another kill, it's got to be the Redbirds. They have to fly on in quickly. Three seconds on the clock. Can anyone get there to touch in time? Last one to do it would be Flob. And no, cannot get over the seawall in time. Akron, whoo, they're making me sweat too. This whole map's making me sweat, Andy. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole sweaty affair when you really think about what happened over in the Solomon Isles during World War II, brother. I'm not going to lie. It's a, it's a very sweaty affair. But uh, but I think that, uh, I think again, what you're mostly looking at, you, you asked the question, do you commit the glide bomb there? Knowing that you were able to get that fifth tick of progress overall through that round, now you just hold it because you said it correctly that it can bail you out of a very sticky situation that if the zips come out of the gate and try to go towards that B zone, which they are setting themselves up to do, keep in mind you, and things start going completely awry, you can get that defense back in your favor, or if you end up going round for uh, round for round and you get offense for round number five, that's when that glide bomb can pay dividends. Well, once again, Akron, similar setup here as they look to move potentially a B threat, but honestly, they're just... This entire opening setup has not really provided really any success whatsoever. Yeah. That win for John, though, opens the door a touch, but very quickly to close it is boost. And now the bigger problem for Akron with that kind of delayed hit towards B is you have to deal with this player in your spawn. Leo on three. Good supporting help from Flob, who's nearby. And Akron's stuck. 45 seconds of the clock here, and they are absolutely dead pinned into their backside spawn. It's not just Leo Bears that was back here, keep in mind, it was also Flob, and because of that, Zips knew that they had to win a battle on two different fronts, but where two Redbirds fall, Saint is right there to pick things back up, sees at least one player over by the concrete staircase, that'll be John's, it'll take care of them in kind, 27 seconds remaining, just a three life lead in favor of the defense, but Zips are just struggling to get middle map control, every single time one Redbird member falls, another one is right there just to threaten any semblance of setup for the Zips. Mm. Can they sneak away another A control point? <laughs> That's the real question, and boy, they very well may. Out of the spawn trap very quickly. Now into the ship itself. Thieves, once again, trying to delay, extend as long as humanly possible. Help on the way. 12 seconds on the clock, though. It's a 15v20. And there are still so many members of Illinois State lingering around the middle of the map. But instead of playing for the point, they're trying to play around the flank. A potential costly decision. Last player to contest would be Sade. He gets turned aside, and Akron may have very well just done it again, Andy. Yeah, they sure have. Second tick done. Third on the way. Leo wants the challenge from the high ground. Turns it into a double, but the extra 60 seconds have been punched through. A 16v10, though, and you know what Leo Bears is thinking. Finds those two kills. He also gets some help down low by Saint. So Leo Bears is going to go try to collect in a couple spawn kills, but Johns was just playing a corner. Will end up not having any sort of threat towards their spawn whatsoever, at least on that side. But look at the ring control coming through from Redbirds. You've got two players over there. Boost will fall. Saint, again, will be picking up over by this cliff path. Won't be able to find much of anything besides information. So now it comes down to Leo Bears to be able to stuff this push attempt. That's going to be coming through the south side of the map. Timing here is everything in goodness. <laughs> Nearly foils the entire setup towards top ship. One more close near. That's John who finds the kill. 27 seconds, 5v11. Long range shots from John immediately responded by Sait. And that will likely be a confirmed B zone defense this time around. Unless Bio can find this kill and then quickly make a play to stop the clock. Which, hold on a second. This is another situation for the Redbirds where Not they've again. overextended again. You've got three members on. Flob gives away his position by taking opening shots. Stuck though on the beach front. Allows an opportunity for the Redbirds to come in. Find the quick trades with the cut. And the last player in John will be just a touch short of confirming one tick of progress on the B zone. Yeah, I mean, it was it was denying at least that one tick of progress over by B, right? Because, I mean, if Redbirds are consistently going to be able to at least put up five ticks of progress, then that would have been at least a non-benefactor. But almost walking away with that one tick, that would have been just an inch away from maybe Zips uh, getting closer, a little bit more comfortable to confirming that fifth round defense, which we know every single team wants to have when it comes down to a good Vutu control. Though considering the odds if Redbirds continue to overextend through ring when they find that the round is absolutely winnable, it becomes desperately losable at certain moments of time. They just get <laughs> too over egregious at just the wrong time. So through their opening offense, not playing any funny business, two players over top LSC, two players looking for ring control. 
desperately losable is something that I would get a bumper sticker of. Just <laughs> mantra for my life at times, it feels like. He sure to had a bumper sticker, absolutely. <laughs> the whole nine yards. Inspirational <laughs> cat poster. One of the things. <laughs> Good stun up the middle of the map. Results in a very easy elimination for Flop. One more member down low. Hello, how are you? No problem there. 28 to 26. And with that, this will likely be at least one, if not two ticks progress at A. Delayed play over from Leo over towards B as well is actually going to make a decision have to come through here for Akron. But as they quickly deny, now they can focus forward looking for a retake. Leo Bear is flying just a little bit too fast, though. Had a very superior position. Was actually going to force all the zips again to spawn on the backside of green. And finding that one kill, the zips felt comfortable to maybe try to contest this A zone. But while all this is happening, keep in mind you, Saint makes the rogue play off of the respawn, going all the way over towards C. And it's confirming tick progression over there at the same time. John's maybe over here trying to do some heroics over to deny the A zone any further progress. But they'll be quickly dealt with. Redbird still maintaining this two life lead have a lot of map position, mostly top LSD control. That last tick of progress oh. will be fallen by the wayside, and they'll get that 60 seconds on the board. That's a big win from Leo coming out of ship, and now he's actually got the regen, playing for top green, and he's on the hunt. Gives up bio for a second. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Bit puzzling. You saw him go left. His teammate just, he just, your teammate just died. Uh, confusing, to say the least, but regardless, it does kind of cut off this mid-alley. From Akron's defense for now. Second tick of progress was never fully depleted, so there is some work to be done here for Flop. Just comes down to you decide to actually get onto the zone, or do you want to try to hold off this mid-cut? We're getting our answer pistol in hand right over the top of the rockets. The glide bomb that somehow takes care of John, but not Flop. <laughs> and with that, an opportunity for Redbirds to try to work their way in. But even still, with that all said, valuing the eliminations more than the actual point progression itself, and it's working out for the moment. Storm actually ended up getting up towards top ring as well, so that play has completely been put to rest. But that glide bomb also being called in by Redbirds, you knew that they felt the ante to be able to try to close out this offensive round, but now they are struggling to try to at least hold on to this map position. They're one saving grace, one minute and 15 seconds on the board. They have a four life lead. Good long range shots from Thieves, backside of the map. But once again, Akron is giving up a lot of space here. And it's allowing the Redbirds just to kind of sit, hold angles, and wait for some ang uh, some, uh, some gunfights to be won. And man, this is the Redbirds now with a couple of members forward. No one's watching this mid-cross, so the second take of progress looks good. And for the team that's 6-5 and five in control, you would have thought that just off of that stat alone, you'd say it's probably the, six, the Zips that are 6-5. and five. No, that's, that's the Redbirds, baby. And now 8-4, 45 seconds of the clock. Leo for the 1v1. Good stun comes through, finishes the kill, and he's going to work on the third tick. 7v2. They don't have the lives to do this. Thieves and Bio have to go huge. Be able to deny these last five players from trying to get close towards this B zone. And with Bio finding two on the back end of things, it's a minor reprieve for now. With this 2v5, the biggest ally here is the clock. You can find a couple of trades, maybe there's an opportunity. But the thing about this is you've now once again allowed the Redbirds to get on the zone for free. You have to challenge this. Bio for one. Now just down to him, he gets cut from behind. And how about Illinois State? Their worst mode so far in the year. Tragic record wow. in the top cut. They make Akron look a little silly on it. They have their own silly moments, specifically on their two defenses. But look. This Redbirds COD team, I've talked about it when I first cast it over top of them during uh, the first split, Alan. And, and I talked to you about it before we ended up casting them versus that Miami roster, is that they are just a few licks away from being a cohesive team. If they can collect off of being an aggressive team and try to work off of one another's presence on the map and turn that into superior positioning, specifically like Kavutu, I mean, that is a recipe for success, no matter the mode that's being played on Kavutu, both hardpoint and control, that if they are going to constantly find all these gunfights, it just comes down to one player coming up from behind, a very aggressive position from Leo Bears who finds a two-piece in the spawn, but maintain rink position. If they're finding kills over by top cliff path, to maintain top LST position. That was a multi-checkbox -checks list when it came down to how 
Redbirds did play out that entirety of the Glue 2 control, even on offense. They were relentless on recognizing what you were calling out continuously. I still don't know why Zips were playing uh. the most passive defense I've ever seen this side of the Mississippi on, on that B-zone control for Gavutu. But it allowed all of Redbirds to be able to maintain that top green and back green position, maintain that ring position, slowly encroach their way, and kind of collect on these unforced errors that Zips were just not playing in any sort of position to be able to deny uh, that yeah. front position. It's it's very puzzling, and maybe there's something to be said about the fact that they're trying to run maybe a little bit more SMG pressure than AR, but I don't know. It, it definitely is a bit peculiar to see a B defense literally sit in spawn and give away not just AA gun control, where I would say first and foremost that kind of subconsciously tells me that you're afraid of long-range gunfights, but on top of that, if, Red, if the Redbirds are running subs, they're walking onto the zone and getting one of the more key areas where subs are actually useful. So, I don't know. Definitely something needs to be looked at there for Akron, but for Illinois State, beautiful stuff. And that now kind of changes the dynamic of the entirety of the series. Uh, and the thing, too, is it's not just the fact that the Redbirds came through and were able to find a way to win that map. They did it as a really solid collective where they're able to kind of manipulate the map in a way that strategically puts them in a great advantage. And you want to talk about a great map mode combination where that could evidently come through. How about the hard point for the Tuscan? All of that plus some more, man. Like, you know, we get, we talked about the bulk pressure. You want to talk about the map mode combo that basically birthed that little three-gun meta? You're looking at it. Hard point on Tuscan. The bulk can absolutely come out to play in favor of a 2AR or 2AR or... I get, yeah, 2 AR with the Volk of the Automaton and 2 SMG presence, where this Redbird COD team is wanting to constantly be aggressive. They are just berating every single angle at every single time, no matter the map mode combo that we've seen so far. And although the Zips were able to do it and were able to walk away with a sufficient amount of time off P1 in the second set for that Berlin hardpoint was the biggest benefactor for them to close it out, from that Berlin search, the Gavutu control, Redbirds are absolutely just in a firm position to maintain control and momentum to close it out here. Okay. There it is. I don't know. I mean, are we just going to continue to cast the CCL and just get the opposite of our expectations on the year right now, Andy? Because so far, the last two weeks we've done this, it's been complete bafflement. In bafflement? I don't know. So it's, we've been baffled. <laughs> that's, that's all I know. There it uh, is. Boy, th this is... Again, you know, I, I kind of go back to what we said at the beginning of this entire series, where... I feel like at times we see this Akron team and they're not running in a fluid, cohesive manner, like whatsoever, or the setups that they're putting together are just way too conservative. I don't know, man. It feels like one of those weeks though, it, this Akron team is just not the same team that we've seen in the past and Illinois state are kind of reaping the benefit of it. Uh, I mean, they're in a really good spot at the moment, obviously up to one, but Based on what we saw in the Berlin search and destroy, the security of a map five search has got to feel really great if you're a Redbird fan. Yeah, it absolutely does. And now you do have that little bit of a safety net that even if you lose this, at least you're going towards a much more comfortable map mode combo of that Tuscan search and destroy. But get through this hard point first. It's going to be quite telling because, again, just to bring it home one more time, every single time that the Zips, at least in the pre on the previous two maps, when they're spawning in or at least the trade has to come through, it seems that the communication is, okay, I'm watching this. Nobody is pushing through anything whatsoever. That has to be rectified ahead of this Tuscan a hard point, given the simple fact that one little alleyway, one little hard point can absolutely turn into a snowball effect. Good for opening eliminations here for Akron. Convincing control on the hard point and forward in towards Church. Oh boy. Now all the gunfights are just being won. Not good news at the moment for Illinois State. You don't want to give away all this time for free, but the thinner you are on rotation, the worse the news is when it comes to Akron potentially stringing together hills. At the moment, it's all zips, baby. Uh, there has been one gunfight win and I think two nade kills right now for Illinois State. Not good news as Akron continue to run forward. Five in a row for Thieves, and he's already in a good position to foil any sort of a setup from uh, Illinois State. Pep Talk must have been there. I mean, say what you will, Zips did start off on the favorite side of the map, but how quickly they have completely flipped that out and really haven't lost too many gunfights uh, to speak of. Thieves still on that five potentially be looking for these last two to be able to get themselves the glide bomb but redbirds now they do have column control they do have one player up top radio but nobody was going to be clearing away the ramp side it's just two trades to speak of he's still trying to fish for these last two kills there's the first can't find the second blob will shut him down so no glide bomb in the back pocket for akron small silver linings playbook 
Yeah. Better one here, though, for Sate. Oh, I was about to say, if he could find a way to escape from this play in the back, there's an opportunity to get the benefit of what could be a free 30 seconds. But Bio is being tremendously annoying here on this second hill. 20 seconds of scrap time, though, and then with that gunfight win, it should be all but confirmed for Illinois State. Puts him right back into this game. And now we go to one of the more interesting hard points since the most recent change. With the spawns being a bit different, setups can really feel fragile at times. And how about this? Once again, Akron, very aggressive on the zone, but which of you four are going to try to play for the hard point here? Because Bio definitely doesn't want to. He definitely didn't want it to be Bio, because Bio had that head glitch. That's the top three head glitch in the whole game of Vanguard. Now he's not going to be able to at least see that player coming through from tiles, and Blob's going to absolutely collect on top of it. So now watch where all these spawns are going to start coming from. Bio spawns all the way over by P5, more or less. And now Redbirds are able to find themselves an opportunity into three. Yeah, and these rooftop spawns are anything but ideal. And a good route here from St. Even Pincher on the back side of this. So this is a great position wow. for the Redbirds to be in. Oh, just beautiful isolation coming through. Great stuff from start to finish here on the break. The hold and now also the potential scrap. John getting frustrated, just dives on forward into a 1v question mark situation. Good nades coming out from Bio to clear the point, but look how many Akron players are still looking at this hard point. There were three different members in the middle of the map, and that allows Illinois State essentially a free rotation, and Leo, who decides to kind of delay play the finesse game in the back, has also kind of broken up the potential scrap for Akron. Yeah, it's a frustration play, right? I mean, you had those three players for zip spot and over by P1. They still see the hard point is active. They're like, okay, we're going to go hit for scrap time. But not everybody had to. Some rotation, some semblance of a rotation, uh, rotational battle needed to at least come through from the zips. It's a little bit late, but at least they're able to lock down a few more kills. They're going to get grass position as well, Alan, and they're just locking things down in P4 so far. Well, still off the back. The Redbirds, an opportunity to try to get numbers here to flood. Ah, but they're just going in a little bit too individualistic, aren't they? Yeah, sure are. Bio says that. Almost confirmed with those eliminations that we just saw. More still to possibly come in Bio. is just like, yo, you're going to keep coming through this door. We all keep tallying up kills. Six in a row for him. Looking for another opportunity to get streaks on board. As Akron have now essentially blown the lid off this hard point and given themselves the first significant lead since the opening hill. There's Bio, able to at least get that glide bomb. That will be massive. Maybe not going in towards P5, but you would assume going in towards a break for two, maybe a hold for three. We'll have to see how Akron Zips want to be able to use that utility. Going in towards five, you would almost assume that Redbirds would have had the numbers to be here. I mean, they did have sufficient position when you're thinking about down towards the well, over by the rooftops. But look at the position for the Zips. They're all over by that broken side. The scuffle's coming through. Boost will take down one plus a teammate, and the numbers just aren't here anymore for Redbirds to be able to hold on sufficiently, at least you would think. Well, yeah, the, as I said, the, these nades are coming freely through the side window. Everyone keeps coming off spawn mid-map, and they just keep throwing all their utility right on into the dining room table, and it's working out pretty darn well for them. 1v1 now, finally, for the point. Leo gets the double in this life, turns that into 20 seconds that looked pretty darn good for the Redbirds. Bio wants the chow, and well, he was able to take down one weakened player, but can do nothing else beyond. And with the continual spawns for Illinois State in the middle of the map, not only did they have a chance to reinforce this hard point kind of from afar, but they're already establishing at least some sense of a zone around this first hard point. That is until Bio comes back off of his next respawn and turns that into another elimination, getting Akron the opening here in our next set of rotations for this hill. 103 to 99. Birds trying to at least play for this bench. You can see Saint inside of Church will end up taking down John. So that's the middle of the map that's open. The two players are going to be called to come out of you, but Storm playing this monument ever so wonderfully in a one for one position. They'll be able to do just that as the rest of the Zips contest to be able to get this hard point back in their favor. Trades coming back and forth. The battle largely raging at range. Ah, but Saint, last one alive, was hoping to play through the middle cut. And that was already being watched. So now somebody has to win a gunfight, or some nades will have to land here for the Redbirds. You do not want to let 20 seconds go for free. It's kind of like the opening of this hard point. <laughs> There's really not the resources for Redbirds to once again do that at all. Spawns will still be good. Akron looking to change that with this play forward. But as some anchor positions will be held, it does look like Illinois State will maintain the spawns they want for a new. The problem was they lost a significant amount of time there on the first. Yeah, that, I mean, it almost feels like picture perfect for that Berlin hardpoint, doesn't it? Very close first set. Zips are able to get a sufficient time off of P1 going in towards the second set. Is it going to be another snowball that's coming through? Boost is playing a very aloof corner in, well, 
Chan's Empire had no idea that that corner needed to be checked in the first place. We'll probably be checking it three times over in their upcoming Tuscan hardpoints, especially in rank play. But you have Redbirds in for the initial time now. They are holding strong with these close response, trying to recognize how many players are coming inside a church. Oh. Saint actually hits it, and that might be an over egregious chow, considering the fact that now numbers favor all the zips coming down the alley. Oh, but the pinch from behind comes through at the exact right moment. It's Leo Bear and Boost. Setting up the zips in a bit of a, oh, we'll call it like a little channel of Thermopylae there. But as the zips will eventually get the clearance they need on the second, they will lock down scrap time. And Illinois State, looking to just hold on to the rooftops for now, are going to allow a 50-50 battle to occur over the hill itself. And Thieves, Vulcan Hand, takes down the first elimination but can do nothing more. So we transition from two to three. And with that, we also exchange hands at the hard point from Akron right on into Illinois State. Bob's going to be in a very pristine spot to be able to try to deal with these players coming out for five. And the Glide Bomb does get called in. This is exactly when I was wondering if Bio was going to end up dipping in towards their back pocket of Shrieks. And they do call it in for the break. It is just flawless uh -oh. execution coming through. Flob trying to make a heroic play. Leo Bears will find one with the nade. Zips still break into three regardless. There was a scary moment right there, though, where Akron were thinking that the Redbirds were going to spawn in the back of the hill. That spawn hasn't been there in about a month now. So, but they do pick up this pinch very nicely. 20 seconds of hard point time, still the fight over. And Illinois State's not going to concede this yet, especially with Leo in a good position. Saint looking to follow up, but the gunfight's not won, not at least initially. Leo the last one to try to finesse this time. It's him versus Storm. The slide through Chow comes through, but Storm still wins it! Oh no, that's not good news! Leo Bears had him dead to rights, probably 10 times over, but not winning the gunfight. Could maybe have built a little bit more confidence for Akron as they build this lead to 50 points. Yeah, the 50 point lead still subsiding, coming away from that P1 hill during the start of this set of hard points, Alan. And now Redbirds find themselves initially in towards four. They're playing for the pinch. You have Bio up top of Sandbags, and you're losing gunfights over by Grass. So it's a little bit of a pinch effect. And the moment that that door gets pushed through, Bio collapses on top side church. But the gunfights don't continue to go the way for the zips over by Grass. It means that Redbirds having those back tank spawns are going to be able to at least get back in towards this hard point. At least try to restructure this setup to deny zips from breaking once again. But you cannot continue to go in one by one like you had done last time around. And uh oh, and Andy, they they're are. going in one by one again. Absolutely no patience being executed by Illinois State. Puts Akron over the double century mark. And you still have to work through this hard point. You cannot allow Bio just to be here. You cannot allow Bio to be here. And the Redbirds were kind of trying to run two plays at the same time. Two two split set up, two towards old, two towards new. No success on either point. And this map, just about all but Akron, pending they can hold this hill. Point lead still being held, and Flav trying to at least get desperate on top of the table in the middle of cust of this map's room. Got numbers in favor of the Zips. Teammates even coming through. Nades from all over the place. Stuns. Nades. Everything being tossed through that window yet again. But you still have presence of Redbird caught inside of this point. Bios on another five spree will finally get traded by Flav. Nobody's watching the pinch through the bottom side of the staircase. Johns will be able to collect off of two coming through the front side. And just 25 seconds away, Zips can't close it out here. But you feel like they're threatening it going in towards new. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is what we like to call the leader's advantage at this point in time. You're fine giving away the scrap time in order to get more presence over towards the new hill and put the game away there. How about this? Leo Bears has stuck through the back. Opportunity to get a double, but... Misses it just by a touch. Glide bomb called in by Saint. Redbirds will win this rotation for now, but there's not a lot of help by numbers here. And as Flob tries to finesse his life, it's John who's able to peel him off in the close corner and then one more over the heady. Good news here for Akron fans all over with that break attempt. The Redbirds need to set up for one last hit. Oh man, look at the, all the arrows. They're looking at every single simple direction. Redbirds have to flood out from you. It just comes down to Leo Bears, now up to Saint. They're in a 1v1 over against the Monument, and they will lose it. So isolated gunfights coming through, but just 10 seconds, 12 seconds that all Zips need to be able to close out map four. However, you do not want to take your foot off the gas here if you're Akron. SMGs for 
The red bird starting to light things up a touch here. Last four kills going between the two of them. Saint in position to get around the back. Timing is good. Hip fire even better. One more the slide trail, but no. Storm puts him down, and Leo Bears on the high ground at radio also gets cut down. 238, 212. Split spawn situation, but the problem is no gunfights won. Leading boost by himself. Has to do it all, and well, he just may. Last member in the back for Akron is Storm. He just needs to extend his life, wait for help. There is still not a clear win condition for the Redbirds here. And this set of eliminations may have just sent this to a fifth map. And boy will it, no one going to touch in time, but whew, like the opening map, a lot closer than you would have expected at certain moments in time. I feel like we're going to be just broken records, buddy, in this best of five, Alan, because it's literally the same thing. I, I mean, you go in towards the end of the first set of hard points between Zips and Redbirds, and then in towards the, the second set, on P1 no less, the, the Zips just walk away with about 45, 50 points, and they extend the lead to be about 50 points or so, but P4 over and over again. I know you're thinking about it too, P4 is a biohazard, man. Like, you just can't simply just challenge out through those isolated doorways one by one. It needs to be some semblance of a coordinated pinch from either Top Church or one of the two different doorways or even the backside if you do get that god tank spawn in. If you don't, you're just going to simply put yourself into a blunder. And Bio was there to collect not once, but twice on over through two different sets of hard points. Bio goes on about a five, a six spree, got that seven spree on the first one, was able to then get that glide bomb that then paid dividends for the break going in towards three, where you thought Redbirds were going to finally get themselves back into the hard point game. But they got broken up so easily just by a simple yeah. glide bomb that came all the way through. And then desperate times called for desperate measures and the rest of Redbirds were just flying. Uh, no pun intended, at the zips continuously through the rest of the hard points that then follow through for them to lose out that map. Man. Which is so much tighter than you think it needed to be at times. Oh, truly. 39-27 for Bio. A lot of it done on B4. 29 of those kills non-traded. Holy. Jeez. That is a hefty amount. What is that percentage-wise? Like 80%? Uh -huh. Something like that? My TI-83 plus calculator is dead. I can't do the math. That's fair. Mine's been dead since the 11th grade you still have yours no maybe i don't know but on the redbird side this is the thing is like you look across the kds really no terrible results here and i say that with a little bit of emphasis because yeah minus 10 for flob but he still ends up pretty even with the rest of his teammates damage wise and attributed 11 assists so it, it, you know it's a solid team effort uh, from both sides, but I think, again, it's just the same thing we said about Berlin, those little individual moments that are being missed on. Yeah. At Berlin, it was not being able to set up as far as being able to hold the hills. This time for Illinois State, it was about lacking a setup when it comes to trying to break those hills. So, you know, six of one half and doesn't have another when it comes to the hard point here for Illinois State. It's just the coordination that just wasn't there for me, Alan. Look, they had they had some real good showcasing of being the aggressive team, trying to go for those breaks, at least trying to at least trade blow for blow, you know, 20 for 20, the initial for scrap, and the first set of hills, but then it became a stamina issue. Once uh, the Zips understood that we had a certain amount of utility resources, even spawn advantage over Redbirds, ah. they sort of, uh, were able to put themselves in a better position to be able to hold these hard points, be able to break even more hard points, to be able to hold on for such a longer amount of time. The way that Tuscan plays out is just superior positioning 101, and the Zips were able to showcase that ability through more hard points than Redbirds. Can they showcase something like that for Tuscan Search and Destroy after being 6 0'd on the map to Berlin Search? We'll find out. Another quick break. Map 5, right after it. Don't go anywhere. Shining bright this series for the team. They have a Wouldn't you know it? Number 18 on the ropes. Illinois State needing the win. One map away from doing it. We've got a Tusked Search and Destroy in which the Search and Destroy has been, well, at least based on what we've seen so far tonight, flawless from the side of Illinois State. No responses anywhere on the map for Akron in the opening on the Berlin Search. And even with the leads that they have found on both the hard points, neither of the wins ended up being as convincing as we thought they would be. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, look, uh, the way that I framed it up for Redbirds hopping into this series... We even talked in the digital green before we went live. I even said it in the pre-match amble, the preamble, is that when you're thinking about Redbirds, they need to steal a hard point. But they took the control, no less, walking into this as the entirety of the series. They were, I believe, 6-6, six and six, even losing to the Buckeyes in their previous series on the day. 
a must win to say the least in search and destroy is their game mode to take it all the way home alan to beat zips no less number 18 ranked zips keep in mind you I'm sure the committee is going to be scratching their heads about that one at the end of this series no less taking redbirds to a map five but search and destroy on a map that has changed for its spawns in all of its timings in between Probably going to see Redbirds continue to get aggressive towards one of these sites. Uh, I mean, that would be the overall assumption. It just comes down to, is there going to be an opportunity for Akron to really flex around the map? Because everything we saw from them on both sides of the bomb on Berlin was pretty darn one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. How about this? Already a pretty unique look for the Redbirds. High-low stack over Church. One more player forward. This is not going to be seen at all by the player at fire. Problem is, they lose a member over towards the B point, so the Redbirds kind of have to scramble to deal with this threat. Saint literally butts heads with John, and that will be a gunfight win for the Zips, giving him a three on two, an opportunity to plan here today. With the boost and Flob are playing more than isolated from each other. I mean, Flob is probably waiting for an exit through the middle of the map. They won't find that timing as the bomb planter will just get over back towards that god heady. Not going to be joined by Boost, so at least maybe try to play for a trade throughout this retake, but they have no idea that John is still from behind. They're going to commit towards the flank. Ah, free kill. No worries there. Yeah, love the play from John. Try to get a little rogue and nearly secures the ace, but Flob is able to shoot back, find the elimination in the trade. And he's hopped this at the exact right moment. Thieves, though, very aptly will check. I was going to say... I don't know if he saw Thieves duck around the corner or not, but the call to hop the bomb was the right one. Not really a winnable position for the 1v2, and it will not fully be in play, and the Zips will get their first search and destroy round in this best of five. Yeah, and you really have to think that it's all from that island play, at least maybe being able to lock that down defensively, making sure that the, uh, the flank will be secured, not allowing John to be able to commit all the way through maps. It's been one big gunfight to at least keep in your favor for Redbirds. It does not happen. Zips at least won't go completely roundless as far as Search and Destroy is concerned versus the Redbirds. With this offense, the way it's set up for Redbirds, they're going to immediately duck down to over towards Well. Flob is going to play an aggressive angle up top over by the pop-up. Drugs at least one player away. But two more players from Redbirds still trying to commit towards Patio. Oh, this is actually a really interesting look at a setup here. You show force over towards the top side of Church. Try to pull the defenders off of that angle at radio, and then you double hit through P5. Creative! I like it. And even with that all said, the plan actually still maintains itself over towards A. So now Bio by himself would have to get the job done with either a quick scope or a couple of pistol shots. Good prediction on the slide, but not good on the connection. And some trickery there from Illinois State to gain an offensive advantage to tie us at one. Yeah, again, they, there were some influence at least some stuns nades in the middle of the map but it all just mostly played off to at least get the information the i guess the confirmation yeah at least there's one player top church but as you said you still commit those two players down by p5 they then commit towards that same flank that john actually still found for themselves in their offense for the zips be able to get behind the entirety of the play and clear out the backside of church just left Oro bio in a 1v odd situation something that we saw continuously through that berlin search and destroy offense for offense we'd go very similar setup through the zips. Bio up top. Fire oh, will end up that. taking down Boost, but a quick trade comes around. Yeah, I don't know if Boost was looking at somebody down low in the middle of the map, but it looked like he was kind of positioned to take the 1v1 versus Bio and never really got any shots into him. Saint, who once again tried to play forward, denied the space to work with, and the trades continued to go back and forth, but in the end, it favors the team that secured the first blood. 2v1 for Akron. Bomb saw hasn't been playing yet by Storm because they don't know where Flob truly is yet. That bomb is actually going to shrug away from A. The communication is going to be from John's Empire. Hey, I'm still inside P5. Let's at least double up, play for this kill. Maybe we end up getting the trade. There's certainly no way that Flob ends up taking down both of us. But Flob clears out the B side. Let's find the first and get the information on the second. It's got to run. Gets away cleanly. Quick rotation from Storm to get this plan at the A site. Where is he setting this up for? Tight corner will allow him to, if he wants to, play up to fire. But instead, it's going to hold the close corner at you. Knowing the SMG could potentially just win this gunfight versus the Automaton of Flob. But he's taking a long angle to hold initially. Does he still hold this? Yeah, sure it does. The shots are true. Akron, able to keep this in all offensive affairs. They go up 2-1. to one. I surely thought that you were going to end up having at least rotation go through the backside and... Play for top fire once they weren't getting immediately challenged out from grass, but Storm just holds the angle. 
I mean, worst comes to worst, you just try to play the timing. If you are flawed, maybe you could just hop on some of the bomb. Again, mm -hmm. same thing that ended up happening going back towards round number one, but does it end up coming out to be? Wonderful call when you're thinking about a four storm. Again, almost ends up getting lined up, but saw flop taking down their teammate of John's Empire immediately wraps back over towards A, knowing that the timing just simply wouldn't have been there for flop. Another offense coming through. Four Redbirds, though, trying to get aggressive up towards top fire. Byer's going to take them down, though. Quick trades again. Oh, and the SMGs in the bottom side of the map actually went out in their individual ones. So Bio gives away his position at top church in order to potentially deal with any push through threat to B. But as he starts to clear out the fifth hill, you'll very quickly realize most of these doors are still shut, so no one's here. And now the question becomes, as the bomb gets planted, how do you want to try to deal with this plant at the A site? And well, it would have been nice to keep a frag grenade, but he decides just to heave that one over the map. And now it's just down to a pretty dry vanilla 1v3. You have to do this essentially from a pretty terrible spot. Isolates one on the Saint, avoids the initial potential trade. But Leo is holding a corner, knowing that he's got to come through his line of sight at any given moment in time. Bio would have to check this. And well, this little play to go up top from the well is not going to give him a lot of time to secure the kill nor the plant. He's going to fully wrap back behind P3 as well. I mean, the time, just the immediate yeah. adversary, you'd have to hop onto it right about now. So has two more players he has to cut through. Like he's on a two, maybe he can find this third. There's one challenge that's going to be around in the corner for Flop, but they'll clean things up. And yeah, overall, again, a lot of the pressure coming through for Redbirds offensively. Their two rounds that they have won is all thanks to the pressure that they are showing down by P5, being able to at least shut down that flank play that could end up coming through from the rooftops. They don't hit it through this time, though, Alan. is completely go back up through that fire alleyway and then just commit towards that A plant, holding numbers in their favor. It was going to be a nice reserve call coming out from Redbirds, a team that have notably, especially through that Berlin Search and Destroyer, not shying away from being the overly aggressive team, but can they win a defense? Trading of the nades. <laughs> <laughs> Here's yours, you take mine. <laughs> exactly. Stunned to confirm that boost still is in that position. Shutters will open. Bio sees the shoulder, and oh, that's just too easy of a read for Bio. And then down low, John keeps safe the middle of the map. Saint also caught peeking through windows, and ooh, okay. So Illinois State struggling to get a kind of a, even a look at what they wanted to do defensively, quite literally. Forced themselves into some pretty unfavorable angles, and Akron just reaps the reward, no problem. That's two times now that Boost has died off top church like that to Boost, no less. Uh, last time that they died uh, trying to take at least gunshots towards a player over by that tiles box, but this time around they lose that 1v1 trading of the nades, get stunned as well to get the confirmation or bio up on top fire. He's get that first blood, but that time around, John's Empire just plays aggressive through the middle of the map, walks away with two. Blob's gonna take their chance to try to get oh, themselves man. up top, and bio again, these first blood try engagements, bio has been coming out on top three times over now. A yeah, good nade trade though, that actually takes care of the sole defender of this A site deep towards fields, and so Saint's gonna use this as an opportunity to control church, or at least contest, I shouldn't say control. Wants to clear the high ground. He's going to find this freely. But the problem is no one from Illinois State is going to recognize that Thieves is already in towards top fire. So as Leo is still waiting for the call to plant. Actually, part of Thieves isn't up top. He's down low. Now he's actually kind of isolated at the moment. Help was trying to get there in the form of John. But he's unsuccessful in providing any assistance. But it does at least an opportunity for Thieves to get out as the bomb gets planted at A. Oh, Saint is on the chase. We'll find Thieves in the back. Look, if Saint doesn't find him, you can see where Boost is at on the map. Even before the bomb got planted, Boost said, all right, I'm just going to go back and play this half wall. Sounds up to Bio in a 1v3. On three, though. Opportunity to maybe play for streaks and give up the round, but as he tries to get up top, gets figured out no problem. 3-3. Three, three. And... A very bizarre search and destroy. We're in our first one. I think we just kind of strategically gave an advantage to Illinois State based on how they're playing the map. This is once again be accurate. Doing well in the opening engagements. Just both sides have had kind of a weird look after the first 30 seconds. It's just the collection of information. If it's John's on one side, just being able to push the envelope of aggression. Last round, they put it through the middle of the map. At the beginning, they were doing it through P5. That time around, it was thanks to Saint. Did the same thing. Went through... Uh, the middle of the map got up top church and just denied any counter rotation that came all the way through. This time around, look at this. Four players deep, just choo-choo training their way all the way through the bottom side of well. Oh, 
Boss is dangerous, though. That's the oh, reason why. That's why. I was going to say, those stuns <laughs> were connecting, and it only takes one good cook nade to completely blow this play up, literally. But the thing about this is, with how quickly those kills came through, as much as I hate to say it, Bio does at least have some sort of an angle to work with, because I don't think people expect him to be there. But no, this watching corners. Play your numbers. Easy peasy, no problem. And just as cleanly as Akron had one around a couple of rounds ago, this one, I think, is the most convincing we've seen so far. That was the defensive round that Redbirds needed. Now they can start stringing together rounds that they continue to isolate plays on their offense, try to catch players off guard by playing these very interesting and adept timings and angles. Blobs up to 10 and 4, keep in mind you. Heaven to me. Again, just getting wildly and aggressive, taking these very Regis challenges and walking away with him. Does have an automaton this time around. Two players up top fire this time around. Is Bio going to be able to walk away with first blood? They sure do. That's four first bloods now for Bio in the search. Mm. Been too convincing from that position, honestly. I think we would all say. Yeah. And the interesting thing about this now is, you know, Storm is still playing the field defense at A, but after being naded last time, he's giving some space now that there's numbers. So, 4v3, you have to get a kill somewhere. Flop's giving up his position. So, he's kind of stuck. He can no longer be the one to make the first move here. It has to be a play through field. So, Boost and Leo are going to start working their way forward. Not a lot of time on the clock, but defensively, Akron is comfortable. They've got everything they possibly want. Every angle's being watched. John's heard that door crack down low, too. And Flop is going to brush through, gets the turn, but won't be able to get the burn. And while all that was unfolding, the players over by the mid-map also got cut down. So just as we were singing the praises of Redbirds being able to win their defensive round, Zips answer back with one of their own. And just playing really reserved Call of Duty. Look, Bio is undeniable as far as First Bloods are concerned. And not because the Redbirds are trying to take any sort of adaptation to deal with these tendencies of bio just being up top fire or top church continuously through these rounds, Alan. They're just giving him one-on-one -on -one gunfights, whether it was bottom tiles, that first blood, or top fire. Mm. Bio's just walking away with them, and it's just Zips playing the numbers advantage soon after. Oh, quick hit through middle U, though, this time for Illinois State. Thieves not expecting that whatsoever. And oh boy, the Redbirds are finding so much value. If, if I mean, we need to get this bomb carrier right now. Storm is in a really dangerous position, and oh boy. Yeah, these subs are just running this round for the Redbirds, and it's working out beautifully for them. Bio waiting for someone to challenge. Finally gets an opportunity to collect another elimination. 2v2 we go. Not a ton of time on the clock to clear all these angles and get the bomb. And Bio gets caught with an 8. Ah, oh, bad news bears here. John in the back looks for the trade, misses the timing of it, and oh boy, Leo puts himself in the back cellars. It does get taken down quickly, so an opportunity to go 1v1, but John has to wait for your region and still collect the bomb and still plant, and all while trying to avoid boost. Difficult laundry list, to say the least. Yeah, I was about to say, that's a long laundry list you're making there, brother. Actually going to take this as an opportunity to try to clear all the way the back around. They're trying to play for this kill rather than try to play for this plan, and well, boost is actually going to hear this door crack all the way through. No, they won't. John's is on dead silence, so that door crack will be silent. So John's going to climb up this ladder. Might actually be able to find some timing on back behind boost. The 2v3 comes through from the zips. Wow. Bio is able to at least get that challenge finally coming through. Gets caught with a nade in hand, but Leo Bear's losing that gunfight on the backside of wine. And then John making the heads up play, popping dead silence, quickly moving their way all the way back through that church ramp. Pay dividends to win the 2v3. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's happening. It, it, yeah, it could be happening. <laughs> I don't want to say there for certainty just due to how this search has gone so far, but John is literally with Bio turning this into what is going to feel like a 2v4. Different look, though, for the Redbirds. Flob this time, very passively playing up top at fire while the rest of his teammates send over some set nades to B. None will connect at the moment. John playing an off angle, close side patio. I do not believe that stun will connect with him. And with this flob will join. John has to get one from this position. That nade for sure hit. Here comes the chow. And John's not good for at least a one elimination. B site now contested. But Akron, quick on the rotation. Have an opportunity to at least try to fight and contest a plant. Oh, and Leo Bears should feel comfortable at least try to work this plant. Now you still have Storm on the backside of that truck. And this is actually a wonderful call trying to work your way back over towards A. But nobody cleared out the backside of church. 2v2. Mm, here we go. Bio looking to make a play. 
And the timing here gives him the 1v1 he wants, but Whoa. Saint slides underneath him. Bomb now immediately going to get called for the plant. Storm, 1 in 6. Trying to extend the opportunity to put the game away here. Finds the first 1v1. Not clean with the shots, though. Help down low. Should have an angle, but Redbirds are going to patiently wait out Storm. Wait for him to make the first move towards the defuse. There's the corner check. Storm's got information, but gets caught in the middle of no man's land. It's going to be a round 11. I thought they were going to walk away with it again, brother. I thought they were going to do it again. Bio found that very easy pickings of a kill. Look, the idea was correct. For the Redbirds, they had the numbers advantage. They cleared away the back. They saw that there was one player on the backside of the truck. That was Storm, keep in mind you. But the last known information for Bio was on the backside of Church, but they still wanted to rotate through Church, no less. And because of doing so, they put themselves in a position to where Bio was able to at least find that one kill and almost had a good look for the second. It's an offensive round for the oh. Zips for round 11, and you've got Saint getting aggressive through the middle yep. of the map, playing a very tight corner. This is the round one defense from the Redbirds. You double stack high low over towards church. You push back that player at fire and you get Saint through. And nobody has any. Oh, he got stunned. Storm's going to know he's in this position, but the gunfight's still won. Now backing away. No one's even looking for the trade. John didn't even come to assist in any form. Puzzling to say the least. And now you've got Flob on an aggressive angle up top to take down the bomb carrier. John has to win this 1v1. He turns his back to Saint and he finds the kill. An upset on the main stage. One elimination away. And it gets punched through. Number 18 falls as Illinois State and the Redbirds survive through both searches and collect a must-needed win for their chances at escaping the LCQ. It's got to get rowdy at the Illinois State University campus. The Redbirds have done it. They have upset the number 18 overall ranked team. The committee's got to be up in flames right now. The DM's got to be going absolutely crazy. Mental, I'm sure that it must be, Alan, because this is just something that, again, you and me, when we walked into this, we were just like, yeah, you know, maybe they walk away with a map number two, but the respawn should absolutely go in the favor of the Zips. Not the case. This Redbird squad finally able to come into their own, something that I've been trying to ask for, plead for, scream yep. to the heavens about, and hopefully maybe one Redbird up there might hear me that the cohesion just simply was not there, man. And it's finally <laughs> come together in this week against the Zips, no less, a must-needed win. They came off of a map five loss versus the Buckeyes, but they beat the number yeah. team, number two team overall in this top tier for the second split in their division, Alan. This is the step in the right direction that they need to be able to find themselves if they want to negate any sort of factor of getting into that LCQ. Wow. Woo. And it's just, there's there was not enough help. John and Bio were doing literally all of it three total kills compared to what they had to have had what like 23 between the two of them that's tough scenes right there for akron and once again you kind of look over the first bloods there really wasn't an advantage on either side it's just man that's some tough scenes right there for akron for sure but i mean look i said at the top of this matchup what akron team are we going to get today and the one that we got was the disjointed kind of lost in the sauce akron zips team that nearly threw away about 80 two different 80 point leads and hard point as well yeah so you know the, the thing about it is for akron i don't want to say that this match didn't mean anything but you're already confirmed for playoffs and the chances of you getting really overtaken outside of a top three seed from the midwest division is pretty low but still to lose to the illinois state redbirds as you try to finish off this top cut stage definitely going to take a hit to the confidence yeah i mean look when it comes down to this entire team for Akron, you know, you, you still have Mavericks, you still have the Fighting Illini to play, and mm -hmm. you know, depending on what happens to a, a, a in that Illini match, not saying that Illini are terrible, not saying that Akron are awful either, they very much so could actually be a third seed uh, swap up in between Akron and Illini if they continue to play the same Call of Duty that we saw here today. We know That's... that the Illini are are decent, but Redbirds absolutely came through in the search and destroy, in the control, and absolutely made a mockery of the Akron Zips. Maybe it was overconfidence. I'm not here to to make any arguments or claims on that on that fact, but let alone this Redbird squad has finally started to heat things up and is going to make playoffs very interesting coming out of this Midwest region. Very much so the case. That's match two of the opening night back from spring break. Done. Dusted.
Put it in the books. The Red Birds upset number 18. Be curious to see what happens with Akron after this point, because as you had mentioned, their schedule from here, I wouldn't say necessarily is the most difficult thing in the world. Uh, you've got like a line as you mentioned, but you cannot be, unless they already played them. We, we actually don't know if that's been the case or not, uh, but you play Maybe. Minnesota State. So, I mean, that, that, uh, that Maverick squad is definitely a team that I put kind of on a level playing field as Illinois State. You cannot drop back-to-back -back matches matches rather versus teams that are like that if you want to have confidence rolling into playoffs so things to be learned about this Akron team still but for us we transition to a southern battle Oklahoma State going up against the University of Texas at Austin the Longhorn Gaming Cod roster it's going to be on our screens next we'll step away get both teams prepared be back with our final match of the evening right here at the CCL 